Good morning, and welcome to worship on this day that God has given us. It certainly is beautiful, and we are so excited that you are here, whether you're joining us live or whether you're watching us live stream or later on on our YouTube channel. A copy of our order for service for those of you who are watching online is on our website, www.christlutheranlb.com, also in the Saturday e-blast if you happen to get that. If you are worshiping online, you are invited to join us for communion during the postlude or after worship is over. Church and Society Committee's emphasis this month in January is on Miracle Ranch. Any financial contribution will help keep the children at Miracle Ranch well-fed, healthy, and happy. We have just two bottles of olive oil available to help support this ministry as well. Our congregation meeting is next Sunday, January 23rd, after worship. This meeting is where we elect our officers and council members for the year and pass our budget. We also do, we will be doing this meeting both live and on Zoom, at least right now. If the um, city orders us to close down, then we will. We're just waiting on what the Omicron numbers are doing. So please just pay attention, call the office if you have any questions, and uh, we'll try to get you the news uh, if we have to go straight Zoom as soon as we can. Uh, we do have a lot of sad news for our community today. Uh, we've been praying for the last few weeks for Sean Benoit, the spouse of Sarah Barnett Benoit. He passed away this last week after suffering from a heart attack on the 29th of December. So we want to hold uh, the Benoit Barnett family in our prayers. And also longtime member, Cover G and Bell Ringer, Carol, Carol Price also passed away after complications to hip replacement surgery. Her uh, viewing is at Lubin this Saturday from 1 to 4, uh, that's the 22nd, and there will be no funeral per Carol's wishes. So if you want to see her and give your in-person condolences, know you must do that this Saturday from 1 to 4. And because of COVID restrictions and the, thing, the way things are spiking in our community, communion for the month, the rest of January and possibly into February, we will be doing it on the labyrinth after worship. So with that, there is also no coffee hour for the rest of the month of January, and then we'll make decisions for that through February. Are there any other announcements? If not, once again, welcome to worship. We're so glad that you're here. And I invite you to join us in the call to worship this morning. If you can, stand as you are able. Jesus calls us into this house of worship. We come with open ears, minds, and hearts. We honor and respect this house, and we bring our respect out into the world. Our gathering song for this morning is Come, Now is the Time to Worship. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as we are before. Just as you are to us. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. together. God of justice, Jesus was angry when he saw how people treated the temple, your house. Remind us that how we treat your house, your mission, and your people matters. Amen. I invite you to be seated as the choir comes forward to sing.
each feet. reading of Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. Some are, sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb of a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. gospel according to John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, both the, he, the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you give us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scriptures and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, would not in, entrust them, himself to them because he knew all people and he did, needed no one to testify about anyone for he himself knew what was in everyone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So, do you like to clean? Do you remember as a child if you got to help your family clean? When, when do you know that it's time for a cleanup? Is it when your feet stick to the floor? Is it when the cat dander flies across the hardwood? Which, by the way, is at our house. Um, yeah, so... You know, today we have this story about Jesus and the temple. And Jesus needed to do some cleanup too. Now, Jesus did not use brooms or dustpans or cleaning supplies like what I have in this bucket. He wanted people to understand that there was a better way to get a major cleanup done between God and God's people. 
and it didn't involve sacrifices or the right kind of money. What it involved was following Jesus, who is God. Now, we still try to do things to make us clean in God's eyes, good things like praying and giving money and helping our neighbors, but do they make us clean? No. Following Jesus, that makes us clean. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God, who is creator, Christ, and comforter. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you once again how delighted I am that we are using the narrative lectionary, where we have this opportunity to study the entire book of John as a whole, instead of in pieces, as the other lectionaries do. Because this book, this book of John, it is so beautiful and so very different than the other Gospels, and so incredibly complex that it really does deserve its own year, like Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So to help us begin this navigation, John was written about the same time as Matthew and Luke, somewhere between 70 and 90 AD. The writer may have used the same source material that Matthew and Luke used, or they may have chosen to use other source materials. That's still a debate that scholars are having. But what the scholars do know is that the, due to the Dead Sea Scrolls, it is that this community to whom John was writing, they had issues. They had just been ejected from the synagogue due to their belief in Jesus. And they were feeling isolated and abandoned, and probably ate often from the bread of anxious toil, to use the phrase from the psalm today. Because their question was this, where is God now that we are no longer part of our community? Does God hear us even when we aren't gathered in the synagogue as we once did? So many questions. So much anxiety. Huh. Sound familiar? Now, John places this temple incident in the same chapter as the wedding at Cana, at the very beginning of his ministry and not at the end of it. And there are some really important reasons why. Number one, this removes the temple incident from being another reason that Jesus had to die during Holy Week. In this gospel, the reason Jesus was condemned to die is not that he ra uh, messed up the temple, but that he had the audacity to raise Lazarus from the dead, who, if you remember, was not just merely dead. He was really and sincerely dead four days in the tomb. And by the way, that raising of Lazarus Lazarus is the seventh and final sign in the Gospel of John. And by the way, the first sign was at the beginning of this chapter, turning water into wine at the wedding, causing abundance. Number two, the temple incident has an altogether different meaning, which I'll unpack a little bit later in this sermon. And number three, John begins right at the beginning to introduce this conflict between Jesus and the Jewish religious establishment of the day. This con conflict has a constant tone of confrontation all through this gospel between Jesus and those religious authorities that escalates as this gospel moves forward. And just so you know, as an aside, the NRSV has translated a Greek phrase into the Jews. But if you look at it, it may be better translated the Jewish authorities, not the religion itself. But after all, <laughs> Jesus was a Jew. But the leadership 
in that religion at that day and time was the, were the people that Jesus had conflict with. Now, why is that important? Remember, this community has been ejected from the synagogue. So it's important. And there were lots of forms of Judaism in Jesus' day, just like there are lots of forms of Christianity today. So what caused that ejection? Well, it comes down to what the Dead Sea Scrolls tell us and what scholars believe is that they uh, really and truly believed John 1, 18, which said, Jesus is from God. Jesus is with God, and Jesus is God, the Word made flesh. And it is from John's gospel that we understand Jesus' ministry on earth to be three years long. Jesus goes to Jerusalem three times for the Passover, here in chapter 2, again in chapter 6, and then the final one in chapter 13. Three in Hebrew numerology is the number for completion or perfection. The synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, only mention Passover one time. Now, as we look at this temple incident in the gospel today, it is essential to hear what this gospel says, not what we think it says. Jesus says, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. Now, it's important for us to realize that there is nothing extraordinary going on here during this Passover festival. For the temple system to survive, these ordered transactions were essential. People needed to purchase their sacrifices, and they needed to exchange their coins for the temple coinage. So in John's gospel, there is no mismanagement, and there is no malfeasance. So what's going on? Jesus is calling for a complete overhaul of the temple system. As a matter of fact, no temple system at all. Now you can only imagine how that call for reformation endeared Jesus to the religious Jewish authorities. Their jobs were on the line. Jesus is calling into question the answer that the temple was supposed to give. The question, where is God? The answer for the temple system was here. Here is God in this gold-wrapped entry, in these pillars, in the sacrifices, and the prayers, and the religious people everywhere. This is where God is. And Jesus says in those actions, yes, that's true. God is here. <laughs> But God is not only here at the temple or in the synagogue. Where is God? Where is God? God is everywhere. God is in the world. Oh, wait. God is Jesus. The word made flesh. And we will see this unpacked more and more in this gospel. I want us to think for a little bit about the conversation Jesus had with a Samaritan woman at the well, where they were debating the correct place for prayer and sacrifice in chapter 4, which we'll get to in a few weeks. And Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Jesus goes on to tell this woman that someday we will worship in spirit and in truth. Now I find it fascinating how this chapter 2 of John ends. It's really not normally in pericopes. And Jesus comes, at the, comes out to understand our human nature deeply as 100% human. 
Jesus understands that we humans love signs and wonders, not for building up our faith, simply because we really love a good show. Who wouldn't, love, wouldn't have loved to have been at the wedding at Cana to see those jars of water turned into wine? Right? I would have. That would have been an awesome thing, right? To see what Jesus did just by command of word. And then all during Passover, he kept doing signs and wonders, and people were all excited, but the religious Jewish authorities kept asking him for another one, another sign, another thing to show that you really are the Messiah. And Jesus didn't buy into it. Because Jesus knows us, knows that as 100% human beings, we want signs and wonders. We want miracles. We want to see God visibly present. And Jesus knew what was in our heart. And Jesus knew what was in the hearts of the people that day at the temple. And the question is, what does Jesus see in you? Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please take that posture for prayer that is most comfortable and appropriate for you. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Merciful God, so often we turn what was meant to be good into something self-serving, distorted, or unjust. Forgive us and lead us back to your right paths. God of righteousness, hear our prayer. We do not always understand the purpose of all that you have made, O Lord. Your vision far transcends our own. Teach us to trust in your provision and wisdom and to justly order the corner of this world that we occupy. God of righteousness, hear our prayer. Inspire us by the lives of your servants like Martin Luther King Jr., who saw a vision of your justice and gave his life to bring it about. Move us by such passion for the disenfranchised, the persecuted, and the misunderstood to embrace a life of service and grace that shows the mark of your cross in our lives and direct the lives of those that serve your children through our preschool, Lutheran social services, California Lutheran homes, Christian Outreach in Action, Habitat for Humanity, New Life Beginnings, God of Righteousness, hear our prayer. Our legacy with all, is with all those throughout the ages who saw injustice and did not rest, but rather fought to restore your good order to the world. Join us with them and give us also their zeal and love for you. God of righteousness, Hear our prayer. Your sanctuary is a place of prayer, praise, and healing. Grant to all who need it, who need your wholeness and restoration, especially Justin, Judy, Ione, Don, and Francis, Roger, Daniel, Barry, and Janice, Gary, and Linda, Marilyn, Terry, Glady, Cheryl, Lori, Lois, Zach, Byron, Clara, and John, Dick, and Nancy, Steve, Charlie and David, Elena, Mary and Max, Kevin and family, Brecken, Kristen and Jonathan, Alberta, Cindy, Evie, Bobby, Kylie and Crystal, Jody, Doris, Linda, Barb, Katrina, Barb, Paul, Christina and Scott, Mary Catherine, Jayanna and Ethan, Casey and Mark, Katie, Twyla and Mason, Teresia, Anna, Ed, Teresa, Jessica, Steve and Jenny, as well as those that we name aloud before you now or in the silence of our hearts. God of righteousness, hear our prayer. Sustain those that serve as first responders in the Peace and Diplomatic Corps and in our nation's military, especially Jason, Samuel, Rachel, and Victor, Michael, Aaron, William, Damian, Gabriel, Richard, Chandler, John, Brittany, Davis, Morgan, Haley, Johnny, Brina, Sean, Emily, Stephen Andrew, Michael Joseph, Jim, Sophie, Douglas, Dominic, Jonah, and Colin. God of righteousness, hear our prayer. We pray for comfort in, and grief for the families and friends of Carol Price, Sean Benoit, Angie's brother, and Sue's brother. Hold them close to your heart. God of righteousness, hear our prayer. We pray for the families affected by fire in our country, 
in Boulder County, Philadelphia, and the Bronx. Comfort them as they try to rebuild their lives. God of righteousness, hear our prayer. We also pray this day for Lois and for healing for Kyle, who has a, a mental illness. God of righteousness, hear our prayer. All these things we entrust to you, knowing that you are merciful and have already heard our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please stand as you're able, I'm sorry. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, holy God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have received us as your children, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name. Bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Our sending song is Go Make Disciples, hymn number 540. Make the 
disciples, for I am with you till the end of time. Go, be the salt of the earth, go, be the light of the world, go, be a city on a hill so all can see that you're serving me. Go, make disciples, baptizing them. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated while we have that dis uh, postcard so we can go out and get ready for communion on the labyrinth. Mm -hmm. 